for Phil 90 from Polyfiller. Did we ever let you down? Not me. When you've been up for the evening and you're looking for a bite, sure and get some tasty food to finish off your night. Press on in search of chicken with a secret recipe. You'll find it in Kentucky, now that's the place to be. Step right inside and order, cause now you've reached the spot. Tuck into Kentucky Fried Chicken, that's flavor in a box. Y'all talking to Kentucky Fried Chicken, you hear? Simon sets the pace. You follow right along. Light the lights that Simon lights, or he'll tell you that you're wrong. Simon's a computer. Simon has a brain. You either do what Simon says, or else go down the drain. Simon is a master. He tells you what to do. But you can master Simon if you follow every clue. And if you think Simon's fun at a party, wait till you play it alone. Simon, with five ways to play, from MB Electronics. Hello, hi, and a very good evening to you. I'm Barry Haynes. This is London Weekend Television. Welcome this Saturday evening. And what a super day it's been, hasn't it? It's uh, not such a good time for one of Steve McGarrett's team, though, in the Hawaii Five-O. You can see that tonight at 8.45, because uh, he gets murdered. And the question is, will it be Dano, Duke, or Chin? Well, you'll have to wait till 8.45 to find the answer to that. Earlier, at 6.45... In this Saturday's exciting episode of Kidnapped, Uncle Ebenezer lures young David into a deadly trap. No! Shaw's in May. Your father signed a paper. What paper? Show it to me. Well, uh, there's a chest in the stair tower at the end of the house. Uh, you'll find it in the top room. Kidnapped continues this Easter Saturday at 6.15 here on ITV. The Master Spy. With Jenny Lee Wright as the inscrutable Miss Moneypacker, here now is the man in control, your resident spymaster, William Franklin. Good evening. For obvious reasons, you won't find us in the phone book, and our address is not readily available either. In fact, there are four separate entrances to this building. Here is one of them. As from tomorrow morning, this shop will be closed for alteration. To find out why, follow the fortunes of our three special agents who are about to check in for tonight's assignment. Yes, uh, OK, hold on a minute, man. I'll just check that for you. Uh, hello, Challoner 15, over. Challoner 15, over. When you've dropped your fare at Morley Road, can you go to 22, uh, Sidcup Drive, and Mrs. Goddard, destination the Moor Park Firmary, over? 15, will do. Hello, madam. Yeah, that's fine, that's OK. She'll be with you in about 10 minutes. Not at all. Not at all. Goodbye. Hello, sir. Can I, can I help you? Yes, I'd like to get to Charrington Circus as quickly as possible. Charrington Circus? That's quite a journey. Do you uh, have an account with us? No, I don't, but uh, I'd like to pay with this credit card. Ah, that's it. Oh, well, I'll just have to check this with the manager, sir, if you don't mind. Would you mind waiting a moment? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. It's one for downstairs. Mm -hmm. All right, right through the mint, sir. I didn't know we were active today, sir. Is that why the Major's got such a mood on him? Shall we mind our own business, Higgins? He pays dividends. Yes, Mr. Collins. Sir.
He's 11.47, security rating A3. Yes, he's expected. Right. Shall I uh, send him in? No, you will not show him in, Higgins. You'll follow procedure. Mr. Collins, to the letter. Sir. Uh, that'll be all right, sir. If you'd like to uh, hang about for a moment, we'll have a car ready for you in a couple of minutes, all right? Thank you. I would like to make a telephone call. Um, yeah, well, I'm afraid you can't use this one, so I've got to keep the line clear. There's one in our back office you can use. If you'd like to do that, use that one. Go straight through. Thank you. I didn't know we had something on today, Manny, did you? A life's full of surprises. Yeah, it must be something pretty big. They've got A3s rated on it. Sure you haven't heard anything on the grapevine? Not a thing. Are you worried? Me? No. Worried? It's just seemed that I think they ought to tell us a few things, don't you? I mean, half the time they can't be civil with you. That Collins in there is like a frustrated Sergeant Major, isn't he? Name of the game, isn't it? What you haven't got in the pot, you can't spill. No. Ah, well, look, anyway, uh, I'll tell you what. When Frank comes back from the station, you go and pick up that other fare from uh, Watmo Street, OK? And you say go. Fine. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to take a taxi to Charrington Circus as quickly as possible, please. Charrington Circus? That's quite a journey. Do you have an account with us? No, I don't. I would like to pay with this credit card. Credit card. Right, so I'll just have to check this out with the manager if you'd like to wait there. Not at all. Thank you. That's quite all right. If you'd like to come through, sir. Uh, Lieutenant Collins has gone downstairs to one of your colleagues to uh, assignment control, and uh, he'll be back to check out your your credentials later on. In a couple of seconds, won't be long. So my name's uh, Higgins, by the way. How do you do, Higgins? How do you do? Well, I work on the outside there, you know, on the inside, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's like a uh, bit of a tricky assignment here, then, sir. Does it? Have you got wind of what's going on at all? I think you wouldn't expect me to tell you if I had Higgins. No, 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 I know, I know that's it. But what I mean is, you know, we wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't call you in to find out who's fiddling the petty cash, would they? I mean, I know, no, I know you got to keep quiet, but you see, we're all in this together. And um, I just wondered if you'd heard anything from advanced briefing or anything like that, you know, just uh... Higgins, in your position, you shouldn't be expected to be told not to ask that sort of question. Very good, sir, no, I understand. Fine. I... I think we'll stick to protocol then, sir. Um, he's off like, wait, oh, here he is, sir. Sir, this is uh, 11.69, so I brought him through while uh, it was a bit quiet out. Sir, how do you do? My name's Collins. Now, I, I want to see your passport, and then you can sign the indemnity register. Another one going south. Oh, OK, I'll be out in a minute. Well, we've got three of our best agents on the job, Moneypacker. We should be in with a chance. Mm. Collins has the first one ready for screening. Shall I have him sent in? Right away. Mm -hmm. Hello, Collins. Would you send in Special Agent Trevor Wilkinson, please? Good to have you with us, Wilkinson. I see from your dossier you have a, an unusual pastime, which is sail surfing. Yes, that's quite right. Would you like to fill me in a little bit, uh, what actually it involves? Well, it, inv it involves standing on a, a surfboard yes. with a mast, yes. with a sail on it, and um, trying to stay upright and to sail along. Yes, I saw this in the Mediterranean this year. It's great. It re requires quite a lot of balance and strength combined, doesn't it? Yes, a lot of both. How do you think you do for distance? Uh, not very well sometimes. I mean, quite a lot of swimming. Quite a lot of swimming. Here's getting yourself together again. Well, we have a mission for you. Probably the end of next week. You may have to go through the Bosphorus at 6 a.m. in the morning. Do you think you'll make it? No. How far <laughs> do you think you'll get? I should think about a furlong. About a furlong? Yes. Oh, well, we might get a submarine to take over from there on. I want your mind to take over with something now. We had a message sent from an agent 
And he obviously hadn't got a comma on his typewriter, mm -hmm. or his mind had slipped a cog. I wonder if you could punctuate this verbally. In other words, read it out to us with the correct punctuation. Take your time. Right. So that it makes a bit of sense. Um, hmm. Fritz. Um, where Franz had, 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 had been correct. Yes, I think that end part particularly was good. I think in the middle probably it was a little bit dodgy. It's a tricky one. Thank you. Would you join, uh, would you go over to your briefing bay, please? Send in Special Agent David Bond, please. I think through your dossier with some interest, Bond, there's a particular area that interests me. At the age of 17, you hitchhiked around the world. Which way did you go? Left or right? West. West. Southwest. Yes. How did you start out? I started from Cardiff in the docks on a particularly wet and nasty morning on a ship towards Tasmania. Now, tell me, how long did this journey take? About eight months. Eight months. At the end of it, did you feel you'd learned anything, one particular thing that struck you as being, yes, I'll hang on to that? Because you were only 17, weren't you? I was 17 when I set off. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think the most important thing that I learned was that wherever I was, whatever I was doing, it was only myself that could make any difference to the thing. Yeah. Did that give you a great feeling of actual independence? Independence, a lot of self-confidence, and yeah. knowledge, I think, how to look after myself afterwards. Right, well, this gets me to my next question. As an agent, one has to rely often on a sixth sense. During that period, or any period in your life, can you remember particular incidents when your sixth sense perhaps got you out of trouble? We had, we had one time when we were in mountains in Tasmania and uh, we, had, we ran out of fuel in a light aircraft and we had to crash land, which was rather hair-raising and not a lot of fun. And your sixth sense did what for you? My sixth sense told me to get to the back of the plane and stay in. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Now, uh, an agent sent us a message recently. I think his sixth sense wasn't operating in any level at all. And that was it. We're assured that if it's punctuated correctly, it makes sense. Would you read it out to me as if the punctuation has been put in correctly? Take your time. Fritz, comma, where Frank, where friends had had, comma, had had, comma, I think a series of commas might be Yes, there's a great of. feeling when you get to a certain point, you want to go back and start all over yes. again, don't you, or just give up. I think it's, is it a man who uh, keeps repeating himself? No, it's not quite, but in a few moments I'll make everything quite clear to you. Would you like to join your so colleague in the briefing bay? Collins, send in Special Agent Jim Penfold, please. Penfold, good to have you with us. And yourself. I see from your dossier that you're a Romany traveller. Yes, sir. Uh, now that, in your particular case, in the family history, started in India. Yes, so we've been told, Major, that uh, we originated from Rajostan. Yes, which in is... In India. It? Yes. The word Raj in Romanis means mental, uh, mental land. That's why we left it. <laughs> oh, I see. And uh, how many generations ago was this? I'm afraid I don't understand. Now, no, you're Major. a shipwright and a wheelwright. I'm a wheelwright and carpenter, Major. A wheelwright, in fact, is, is rather, rather more difficult, isn't it? Yes, it's building wheels. It goes on our caravans and our trolleys, etc. And you build whole caravans, don't I you? I build old caravans, yes. Does this require special crafts which are perhaps not available to well, anybody? Well, very old secrets, family secrets of how to build them. I see. Oh, well, I'm, you're going to keep it as a secret, aren't oh, you? Oh, yes. Yes, well, I think that's probably a good idea. Now, in espionage, sometimes people get very nonsensical code messages through. Well, our cipher department this afternoon. Well, actually, they've all gone out to play tennis, which is pretty lax of them, and they've left us with this. Uh, I'd like you to read it out to me with the correct punctuation in it. In other uh, words, making sense. Take your time. There's no pressure. Fits where funds had, 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 yes. had been Correct. I'm here to say, Penfold, it has the same effect on everybody. <laughs> You'd like to join your colleagues in the briefing bay. I will attempt to explain it to you. Uh, Fritz, where Franz had had had, had 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 been correct. 
I don't think we'll do that again, ever. <laughs> and now for tonight's assignment. As you will have noticed, Mammy Packer has joined the walking wounded. As she drove out of the department car park last night, she was seven seconds late, noticing that her steering had been interfered with. When she eventually did get home, she found this envelope sticking out of her letterbox, and had she opened it, there would have been a nasty explosion which she probably would not have heard. The inference from this is that somebody wants to see the back of her. Your mission is to find out why and to prevent that objective. Money Packer, do you think you feel up to coping with the cover allocation? I think so, Major. Fine. <coughs> In order to divert attention of the departmental staff, some of whom are already suspects, it has been leaked that you've arrived for a refresher course in hand armory and weaponry. Now, as you have already just completed a crash course in these subjects, we must now test your knowledge and proficiency. You are going into the firing line, so will you please remove your badges? Turn to the right, and Agent Wils uh, Wilkinson, will you go and join the Major in the weaponry section? Right, Wilkinson, five questions to be answered as rapidly as possible. Even a wrong answer can improve your rating if the bluff is good enough and convincing. That is a Walther PPK. Tell me its weight in ounces to the nearest ounce. 23 and a half ounces. That is correct, and its caliber? Its caliber is uh, 7.65 millimeters. That is correct. What type of gun is it? It's, in fact, a, a semi-automatic uh, double action. That is correct. Define semi-automatic. Semi-automatic refers to the system by which each cartridge uh, replaces the one that's just been fired and goes into the breech. Absolutely so, correct. Imagine you're using a P38, you've got a full magazine, plus one in the breech. You fired off five shots. How many have you got left? Four. Correct. Agent Wilkinson has scored 25 out of a possible 25. <laughs> Agent Bond, will you take the chair? <laughs> This is a Colt Diamondback. It's very similar in appearance to another gun. What's the gun? The other gun is the Smith & Wesson 29. No, it is the Colt Python. Now, what is the caliber of a Colt Python? Colt Python is 0.357 Magnum. Absolutely correct. Your life could hinge on whether the chamber of this gun revolves clockwise or anti-clockwise. If you only had one cartridge, which side of the hammer would you insert it in to guarantee that you could fire it next time you pull the trigger? I put in the left side of the hammer. Absolutely correct, because it fires clockwise. A cartridge comprises of a case, a bullet, a propellant, and one other thing. Primer. Correct. Why would you be reluctant to tangle with an opponent whose only weapon is an ordinary pistol, but which you recognize as a Stetchkin? A Stetchkin is the only automatic, fully automatic pistol. It fires 750 rounds in one minute. Yes, it's quite a quick fellow, isn't it? Correct. Agent Bond has scored 20 out of a possible 25, plus one for confidence, which is a total rating of 21. Thank you. Ken Paul, would you like to take the chair? That is a Browning High Power Semi-Automatic. Does it have double action? No, sir. Correct. What special feature does it have? It has three safety catches. That is correct. How many cartridges does its magazine hold? 13, one under breach, 14. That's correct. Give me the caliber of the Smith & Wesson Model 29. 0.44 Magnum. Correct. What would be the biggest disadvantage to carrying the Model 29 around in an ankle holster? Sorry, could you repeat that, Major? What would be the biggest disadvantage to carrying the Model 29 around in an ankle holster? Because she weighs 47 and a half pounds. She'd be pretty heavy and she's an automatic, no, a double action revolver. Yes, might make you fall over your high heels, wouldn't it? Agent Penfold has scored 25 out of a possible 25. You'd like to return to the briefing day. From theory to practice, would you turn and face Money Packer? Thank you, Major. This apparatus can simulate the conditions for hitting a target on the move. When it is switched on, the sight, the pointer, and the bullseye, in fact, the complete target, are dead in line once in each revolution. By pressing the trigger on this electronic gun, the moving sections of the target can be made to stop. Agent Wilkinson, would you like to come and demonstrate your prowess as a marksman? I'd like you to stand on that mark there. Would you like to take the gun from me? Thank you, that helps me immensely. Uh, what you must do is to point the gun at the television screen, 
Uh, anticipate the moving sections of the target and try and pull the trigger when the target's dead in line. You'll have two shots, you'll be marked according to your accuracy, and you can take as much time as you like when you're ready and confident. I look down there. Uh, whichever you feel easier to do to get the final... Yes. You've pressed the trigger once. Yes, I didn't mean to, actually. Um, I'm afraid I have to count right. it. Be, care be careful that trigger does as soon as you touch it. Take your time. No, no, I'm a bit worried about my defences for you around, but never mind. Would you like to return to base? I'm afraid there's no improved rating there. Agent Bond, you're next to the firing line. Take your time to line up. And remember to get those three in line with this. So only once in each revolution it happens. When you feel comfortable, take your time. Very good, you've hit the target. You've improved your rating by one. It's a bullseye I want. Take your time. Ah, you've missed the target. But you've improved your rating by one. Okay, like to return to base? Agent Tenfold. I need some good marching for this mission. My life is in danger. I'm getting a bit worried at the moment. Take your time, line up and get the accuracy right. Ah, didn't quite press that trigger far off. Yeah, I'm afraid it hasn't hit the mark of the target, so there's no rating there. Try again. Ah, that is much better. That's hit the blue circle, which has improved your rating by three. It hasn't quite hit the bullseye, but that's a much better effort than before. Improved rating by three. Like to return to base? Thank you. Well done. That's much more difficult than it looks. Could we have the latest readout of the mission rating, Money Packer? Certainly, Major. At this critical stage, Agent Wilkinson has 25, Agent Bond has 22, and Agent Penfold has 28. But we still have a long way to go. Now, as far Money Packer! The boat that pierced his screen came from this gun. This gun belongs to this man. Lieutenant Collins. He's in charge of base security. He's a highly reliable man. But then, of course, so was Kim Philby. Now, according to Collins' report, this was removed from the top drawer of his desk within the last half hour, and only three other men had access to it. Here's the first one. William Leslie Higgins. He's a security guard on the base. Very dependable, very reliable. Slightly given to overzealousness in the performance of his duties, which made him exceed his responsibilities from time to time. He is, in fact, a trained marksman and is allowed to carry a loaded weapon at times of emergency and at the discretion of his superior. This is Emmanuel Joseph Lewis. He was transferred to this department from the special branch seven years ago. He's considered to be highly trustworthy and the only man in the department allowed to carry a loaded weapon at all times. Finally, here is Dr. Kenneth Weiler. He entered the screened area four minutes before the shot was fired. He is a trusted physician and has top security clearance to at least three other government agencies. He was here to carry out three medical examinations. That's easily verified because they were yours. Now, accepting that uh, only one of these three men had the opportunity to fire the gun, let's first look for a motive. The most logical explanation is that the man is in the pay of some foreign intelligence. It's possible that by accident, Moneypacker has come into the possession of some seemingly innocuous piece of information, which if she were to recognize its real significance would expose the man as a spy. Moneypacker would like you to join her in front of the security scanner unit. Thank you, Major. Do you do, sir? I don't normally use the SNS taxi shop entrance, so the only contact I have with Manny Lewis is when he comes to my office to give me his weekly expense sheet. He's normally very subdued and never says much. He never asks anything out of line, and he never asks any questions. In fact, he normally restricts himself to a polite good morning and thank you. Bill Higgins is a different cup of tea altogether. He's very talkative and naturally inquisitive. He's been to my office twice in the last three weeks, asking to see the Major about his promotion. 
In fact, the last time, he had just come back from his holiday and insisted on showing me his holiday snaps. He's always been very friendly, and I can't think of any reason why he'd like to do me any harm. Even now, I would trust Philip Collins with my life. Next to the Major, he's the most dedicated and conscientious man I know. Our work brings us into regular contact with each other, and there's nothing I can tell you about his, or about our relationship, that doesn't reflect his very good character. The only conversation I've had with Dr. Wyler in the last three months was about two weeks ago, when he asked to see the personal file of one of our top undercover agents. The agent had just come back from a very difficult assignment in Albania, and Dr. Wyler had been asked to examine him. We believe the agent had been brainwashed, and the doctor was preparing a report on the man's psychological condition. Perhaps I ought to add that uh, Dr. Wyler and I do live in the same block of flats, but we don't see each other very often, and when we do, obviously, we don't discuss the department's affairs. Thank you. Thank you, Money Packer. Succinct and pertinent as ever. Major? No. Let's now find out how perceptive you were in picking up the salient points. Wilkinson, during the last three weeks, how many times has Higgins asked to see me about promotion? Twice. Correct. In the normal course of events, when and where does Money Packer meet Manny Lewis? Um, when he's getting his expenses. That's exactly right. What was Lieutenant Collins doing when you first saw him on the screen? He was sitting behind a desk. Doing anything? Talking on the telephone. Yes, that's right. Uh, Bond, with which of the four men is Money Packer in regular contact? With Higgins. No, Lieutenant Collins. When did she last speak with Dr. Wyler? Three weeks before. Two weeks. Dr. Wyler was wearing a security tag when you saw him. Was it in his left or right lapel? It was on his left lapel. No. Unlike all of you, it was on his right lapel. Penfold, Dr. Wyler has examined the private dossier of an agent who's been working abroad. What country? Hungary. No, Albania. On whose desk was the angle poise lamp? Higgins. Correct. Whilst he was in your view, what was the last action of Manny Lewis? He was stubbing out his cigarette. Right. At which point we must check on your mission rating. Money Packer? Yes, Major. This very critical stage in the mission, Agent Wilkinson leads the field with 40. Agent Penfold has 33. And that sound tells me, I'm afraid, that Agent Bond with 22 must be eliminated from tonight's mission. Bond, been very exciting to have come so far to make you think it was really all worthwhile. If you report to Money Packer, she'll see that you're rewarded. Thank you very much. Agent Bond, the department would like you to accept this rather superb four-band radio. It has a built-in cassette recorder and also a digital alarm clock. Thank you very much for joining us on the meeting. Thank you. Yes, I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Now, quite often, a secret agent has to play a hunch. This is your opportunity to play a hunch. Which of the four men would you say was definitely not the traitor? Wilkinson? I would say um, Manny Lewis was not the traitor. And you, Penfold? Collins. Collins. Well, that's quite interesting, because I've just had a telephone call. That was from the Foreign Office, stating categorically that Collins was on the telephone speaking to the Foreign Secretary at the time the shot was fired. And he was also able to confirm Collins himself that he could see Manny Lewis on the closed circuit television in the taxi office. So you were both quite correct to uh, remove those two from your suspicion, which leaves us with Dr. Wyler and Higgins. Now, what was the, uh, the man who was being examined by Dr. Wyler when he thought he'd been brainwashed, what was he working on? He was working on the Škoda file, so the business of getting wanted terrorists out of Europe. Ah, the Albania link. Yes, we never did get to the bottom of that, did we? Take that file upstairs, will you? Certainly, sir. Now, gentlemen, this is the moment of truth, and I do really mean truth. We have to find out who tried to kill Money Packer and what was the motive. Would you follow me? What's it all about, Mannion? I can't seriously think that I had anything to do with this business, can I? So you're still worried? Of course I'm worried. I'm going in there for interrogation. That means I'm a suspect, doesn't it? Not necessarily. In any case, all you have to do is account for your movement. Yeah, well, I was in the gents, wasn't I? Any witnesses? Witnesses? What do you mean, witnesses? Only room for one. No. I'm being put up for this. I'm being framed, and I know who's at the bottom of it. I bet it's that Collins. I've never trusted him, and I know for a fact it's him that's nobbling my promotion prospects. Now, nah, you could be wrong about that. No, no, I don't think I am. 
No, because if he clocked me going to the loo, he would have had a chance, wouldn't he, to nip downstairs, wouldn't he, eh? Well, he's not going to get away with that. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him straight. Sorry, Bill. Huh? You're going nowhere. I was... What's your game? Right. Take a seat, will you? Now, be a good boy. Sell some taxis. Uh, Doctor, knowing how busy you are, we very much appreciate your cooperation. Uh, Wilkinson, perhaps you'd like to ask the first question. Yes, I would. Uh, Doctor, can you recount your movements from the moment you entered the building? Yes. I checked in the S and S entrance as usual, went through the set procedure in the outer office. I was then shown into this room where I met Lieutenant Collins. We exchanged a few words. He gave me my security pass. I then went to the first aid room, which is on the second floor, which is the major nose I use for the purpose of carrying out medical examinations. Dr. Uh, Marlow, what did you discuss with Moneypacker to your last meeting? Oh, we, I discussed with Moneypacker a file I wanted on Ronald Dervish. I'd been asked to do a medical report on him. As I understood it, he'd been trying to seal off an escape route for wanted terrorists and had bad luck to run up against the Albanian security police. He developed symptoms of psychosis. I needed to look at his personal file for details of his family background. I explained this to Moneypacker, and she let me read his file in her office. Doctor, does this map mean anything to you? Uh, yes, yes, this map was, uh, was in his dossier. It was in, in Dervish's dossier. Um, also, I remember that... Um, oh, what's his name? Higgins, in the outer office. He went on holiday to Yugoslavia. Did you know he was going? No, I didn't know he was going. I, uh, funnily enough, I introduced him to a friend of mine because he, he, he said he was tired, he said he wanted to rest, he wanted to get away. Indeed, he did seem tired and wanted to rest to get away. Um, I prescribed something for his insomnia, and I introduced him to a friend of mine who has a travel agency called, would you believe, Travel A Lot. He works from Victoria. I introduced him to him, and he did a cheap package tour for him, and he went off. I wasn't sure at the time where he went. I would just like to ask you how well you know Higgins. Higgins? Well, I mean, I see him when I come in. I don't really know him as a, as a person that well. I've had the odd conversation with him, that's all. And I mean, like the time when he said that he was tired, I prescribed um, some pills for him for his insomnia, but uh, no, I mean, that apart, the man is a complete stranger. Well, thank you, Doctor, that'll do for the moment. Would you be very kind and work, uh, wait for us in the first aid room? Yes, thank you, Major. If I can be of any further help, please don't hesitate one second. John? Now, I'm going to give each of you a card <laughs> to get your reaction to the uh, doctor's answers. As you can see, you have three choices. Was he telling the truth, being evasive, or telling lies? If you tick what you consider to be appropriate. Thank you. Wilkinson, you think he's being evasive, and you think he's being evasive. Very interesting. We'll see if you react the same after you've interrogated Higgins. Come in, Higgins, and sit down. Sir, <clears throat> before we go any further, I would like to make a statement. Yes, if it's relevant. Yes, I'm being implicated in this affair by someone who's desperate to cover up his own guilt, sir. Well, who would that be, Higgins? Well, sir, I'm sorry to have to say this, but I believe it's Lieutenant Collins. That's rather a serious accusation. What grounds have you got for it? Well, grounds necessary, sir, but you know me. I mean, I'm as honest as a day is long, aren't I? I mean, would I come in here and take a gun out of the lieutenant's drawer and try and take a pot shot at Miss Moneypack? I mean... How did you know the gun had been removed from the drawer? Me? Eh? Well, it's my job to know, sir. I look after all the weapons here, don't I? I mean, there's only two on permanent issue. And Manny's got the other one, and he never left the outer office. At least, not to my knowledge, he didn't, did he? Yeah. No. All right, Higgins, I think you'll serve your cause much better if you're quite calm and just answer specific questions. <clears throat> yes, sir, sorry. Can you account for your movements during the last 15 minutes? Last 15 minutes, uh, yes. I was in the outer office behind my desk all the time, apart from a couple of three minutes when I went to the loop. What did you discuss in your last meeting with Moneypacker? 
My, uh, Miss Moneypacker, sir, that would have been on Monday, when I'd just come back from uh, my holidays. I went to see her, uh, see if there was any news about my application for promotion, and uh, as you know, it hasn't come through yet, sir. Um, we just had a little chat. She asked me how I got on in my holidays. Did I have a nice time, what the weather was like? And uh, she asked me uh, what Dubrovnik was, uh, whereabouts it was, and, did I, and I said to her, it was a very good place and she ought to go there if she wanted a holiday. And I could give her a recommended, you know, the, out my hotel where the wife and I stayed. And just general chats like that. Showed her some photographs and um, that was also really nothing else. Any, anything else that you've told her that we, might, that we ought to know? No, so not that I remember, not that it was relevant. We were just chatting about the holiday, so that was all. How well do you know Dr. Weiler? Weiler? Well, uh, I know of him very well. I mean, he's often coming in and out, but uh, I don't really know him personally. I like him. I mean, I think he's, I think he's quite a nice guy. I mean, he's always, uh, he's always keeping his eye out for me. I mean, if, I, if he sees I'm a bit off colour, you know, he, he'll give me advice, because I'm really the National Health Service, you know, I'm not... You know, I'm not Has uh, he ever prescribed guy. anything for you? Uh, well, yeah, when I was having a bit of trouble sleeping, he, uh, he, gave, he said I'd recommend some pills for me. And a little while ago, as a matter of fact, I was looking a bit peaky, and he, he suggested I would have holiday. And he recommended this friend of his who could give me one of these cut-price package deals. And so I jumped to the chance, didn't I? I'm not earning much here. And uh, it was great, actually. This friend of his gave me one of these voucher things that when I got to, the, when I got to Dubrovnik, I just gave it to this, uh, this fellow, this courier, whatever he was. And, it was marvellous. I was really looked after very well. I took uh, quite a lot of snapshots as well. I don't know whether you want to see them. So. No, before you go any further, what do you know about the Albanian connection? Albanian connection? Nothing. Only what I've heard on the uh, grapevine. And what have you heard? Huh? Well, I was just going to show you the photographs because it, uh, it was apropos of the, uh, of the holiday. And um, just to show that, you know, that we, 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 you know, we had a good time. Because what I wanted to impress actually on the Major was that I'm pretty nifty with the camera. And as I put that in my application form, so you're not You took a boat trip, what... didn't you? By yes, the way, judging from this picture. Yes, I did. Across, yes. across the lakes. Well, what was the name of the lake? Oh, it was the, um... Was it... Uh... Skoda? The, the Skata? The Skatari? Skatari, that's right. So I never got mm. one on names. Especially foreign names, you know me. I'll just go Rolody. All right, Higgins, I think that'll do for the moment. Would you like to wait in the front office? Yes, sir. Certainly. Is that all, sir? Yes, fine, thank you. Take me pictures with me. Yes, sir. Show those to Miss Moneypacker later on. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Now, would you like to uh, fill in these two appropriate cards with the similar reactions to your interview with Higgins? Deliberately telling lies, being evasive, telling the truth. You think he's telling the truth? You think he's being evasive? I see, that's interesting. Now, would you like to tell me who you actually think is the traitor? Yes, I, I would have a guess. I'd have a guess it's the doctor. It's the doctor. And what about you, Penfold? I also think it's the doctor. Right. What are your reasons, Penfold, for thinking it's the doctor? He is uh, a professional, whereas Egan is just, an, as I say, just an ordinary man working on the outside of our organisation, rather than a front man, rather than an inside man. I see. No specifics, though. No. What about Mr. you, Wilkinson? Any specifics? Well, I just think that um, Higgins must have uh, photographed something, perhaps, on holiday, which the doctor doesn't want seen. Yes, that is for the doctor. Without Higgins, you mean having being aware of what he's doing? I don't think Higgins realizes. Yes, well, that's interesting. Let's summarize. Yes, let's summarize the intelligence in our hands. I mean, the snapshots clearly show that Higgins has been on Albanian territory. Mm. But what is interesting, it was made easier for him to go to Albania by the doctor. Doctor's the doctor even yeah. set up. In fact, the travel with the note to the courier, the seemingly innocent uh, message to the courier. So, in fact, it turns out that uh, you are both absolutely correct. Your summations are correct. And Wilkinson, as you were leading when we went into this, uh, I'm afraid you have led right through and continue to be the master spy. You were very close, Pentel. Would you like to follow me? Uh -huh. Well, we're very sorry you got pipped at the post, Agent Penfold, but for your very worthy efforts, the department would like to present you with this very lovely latest quartz watch. It has both a conventional dial and is also a digital stopwatch. Thank you very much, sir. Well done. Wilkinson, you have truly achieved the mantle of the master spy. Money packer? 
Uh, as a token of the department's appreciation, not to mention my own, we'd like you to accept this rather beautiful colour television set. It's a 16-inch set. It works off mains or batteries. It also has an infrared remote control. Rather interesting. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It only remains for me to say thank you for being with us, and we hope you'll join us next time around for another assignment of The Master Spy. And next week, The Master Spy is at the later time of 5.45.